Hello and welcome to our next tutorial video. As you can see, we're going to be discussing another relatively new feature in Excel called Lambda functions here, which let you create your own custom functions in Excel without using VBA or macros or Python or any other programming language. So as I mentioned in one of the previous tutorials here in the filter function, Microsoft has added dozens of new features, formulas, and functions to Excel over the past few years. We covered a few of them before in the XLOOKUP and filter tutorials. But another one is known as the Lambda function. And they are potentially very useful in financial modeling, but I would say that they're more useful if you're something of a power user and you want to make yourself more efficient, you want to make your files more accessible and reusable at the same time. So the best use case of a Lambda function is to define a relatively simple calculation that is annoying to type repeatedly and that you can reuse repeatedly in a file and that can benefit from modest error checking. I think a perfect example of this is defining a function to calculate something like the multiple of invested capital or the money on money or MOM, multiple in investment analysis. So let me pull up our Excel example right here and go down. So traditionally you would calculate the multiple of invested capital with something like a sum if function. You'd sum up all the positive numbers and then you would divide by all the negative numbers and you'd put a negative sign in front. But with a Lambda function, you can type in something like equals MOIC and you can apply it to this range of cells and that will calculate this for you as well. So you can just type that in as your own custom function in Excel and get an answer like that. And you can also add some error checking. So for example, if we have no negative numbers here, we just get an error and it says that the range must have at least one positive and one negative number in it. So that's the power of Lambda functions. You can define them in the name manager up here and just paste in your function. And if you have the syntax correct, you will be able to use it then everywhere in your Excel workbook. Now, a non-ideal use case would be something like writing a table of contents or formatting function for a range of cells. You could potentially do these, but generally speaking, Lambda functions are better if you're making calculations and you want to check them and display the output, not if you are inserting new sheets or cells or ranges or changing around ranges of cells. Also, above a certain complexity level, Lambda functions do get a bit cumbersome to work with, and I'll show you some examples of that later in this tutorial. Now, in terms of the basic syntax here, you want to enter Lambda and then the parameters, the calculations in parentheses, and then you want to enter the cells or values that you're inputting as parameters to this Lambda function. So for example, if we want to enter something that takes a number and then multiplies by one plus the growth rate to grow it at a specific rate, we can enter it like this. I'll go into Excel now and show you an example of this. So you can see the function right up here, but if I enter equals lambda, and then I say base, so our baseline number, and then our growth rate, so we're assuming here that the person is entering the base number, then the growth rate, so maybe 100 and then 5% for the growth rate. We're going to take this base and then multiply by one plus the growth rate. And then for the parameters, we can say 100, which corresponds to the base right here. And then we can say 5%. And this part corresponds to the growth rate right here. And the way this works is that Excel knows that the last part of this is always the calculation or what you're doing with these numbers. And it always tries to match the first numbers or inputs before that to whatever you are entering as hard coded values right here. And so we get to 105 like that. Now, if I were to go in and not enter those parameters, I would simply get a calculation error because Excel doesn't know how to interpret that. It doesn't have any inputs. Now, in addition to this, I could also enter cell references. So I could go down and I could link to 200 down here and the 3%, and this will grow the 200 at 3%, and that's perfectly fine as well. You can link to cells, you can include hard-coded values, or really whatever you want, as long as it matches the function that you're trying to execute right here. So those are the very basics of Lambda function syntax. If you want this tutorial in written form, you can go to our knowledge base page, the Excel page, and then go to Excel Lambda functions. I'll pin this URL as the first comment, and you will be able to click it and get all the files and resources there. If you want more detail on all this, I will go through now how to create the multiple of invested capital function using the Lambda function in Excel. Then I will show you a little bit about how to error check the function. And then I'll explain how you might extend the function and make it even better. And also explain some of the drawbacks of these Lambda functions. 
So as I was saying before, the multiple of invested capital tells you the ratio of the cash flows and the exit value of an investment to the upfront investment or development cost. Now, normally you use SUMIF to calculate it, as I showed you in the Excel file previously, but you could easily rewrite it as a lambda function. I have it down here. And then you can also define it in the name manager, and I'll show you how to write this type of function, test it, and then actually use it in the name manager right now. So I've gone back to a version of this file where there is no multiple of invested capital function defined anymore. And I can type lambda and then range for whatever range of cells we want to apply this to. And then we can use the same sum if function that we're using in the traditional function right here, except now we're wrapping it inside this lambda function syntax. And I'll say sum if range, we still need to have double quotes and greater than zero. This is just how you enter it in Excel. And then the sum range will just be the range that we're entering right here. And then I'll divide by another sum if and say range and then less than or equal to zero and then range once again, and we have that. Now, of course, if we enter this as is, we get a calculation error because we need to pick a range of cells to actually apply this to. So let's pick F69 through K69 right up here. And we get to exactly the same multiple of invested capital, but now we've rewritten it in Lambda function form. Now, as it is right now, this is not particularly useful because it's not flexible we cannot easily just apply this to anything else in this spreadsheet. So the way to make it useful is to take most of this to cut and paste it or copy and paste it and then go to the name manager with control F3 in the PC version of Excel and then go to new and then we can define our own function up here which I'll call MOIC and then for refers to we're just going to paste in our function but we're going to delete the last parts here about the input parameters because when you actually paste it into the name manager to create a named custom function, you don't want to include those input parameters. I'll say OK. And now we see the Lambda function here and we see what it refers to down here. So let's see if it actually works now. I'll type MOIC and apply it to this range of cells and it seems like it does. Now, of course, there are some issues with this. For example, if I enter something like 10 here instead of negative 200, we get a divide by zero error in the lambda function, though to be fair, we also get it in the traditional function. So we want to do some error checking here, and that actually takes us into the next part, error checking the function. The most obvious way to do this is to make sure there's at least one positive number and one negative number in this range. And to do this, we can use the count if function and apply it to the range and make sure there's at least one number that's less than zero and then one number that is greater than zero. And then we can add this condition to the Lambda function inside the name manager and rerun it to see how it now correctly captures errors such as invalid numbers. So let's go into Excel and see how this works. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do here is go back to the name manager and then take our MOIC Lambda function down here. I'll just copy and paste this because I want to have a bit more space to work with this to edit it. I mentioned before, but one of the drawbacks of these Lambda functions is that once you go above a certain complexity level, it gets a little bit annoying because you don't have much space in the formula bar up here. Now you can, of course, increase the space devoted to it as I just did, but it's still a little bit difficult to see things sometimes. You can use the Alt Enter shortcut to add some wrapping within your formula and that may make it a little bit easier but it's still not the easiest thing to do if you're working with a complicated function that's going to take up a lot of lines right here. So I'll say if and, and then count if over this range that we've defined, and I'll say less than zero, and we want this to be greater than or equal to one. And then we also want to count up everything in this range that is greater than zero. And then this has to be greater than or equal to one and I'm closing the parentheses there to correspond to the and statement in the beginning. So if this is all true, then we can execute the function as is. But if it is not true, then we need to go to the end right here and where it says value if false, I'll enter a comma and say range must have at least one positive and one negative number in it. So we have that. And again, I would say that to make this a little bit more readable and usable, you'd wanna use the alt enter shortcut right here to just add some line breaks and this way, by separating it into a couple of different lines as I'm doing here, I do think it makes it a lot easier to read. It's very easy to tell that we're looking for at least one negative number and at least one positive number, and then just executing a simple sum if and using some division right here. So I'll press enter now. And of course we get a calculation error because we don't have the input parameters. So let's fix that and actually apply it to these, the, to this range of cells rather. And we get to the 1.5X. 
And this time if we insert some invalid numbers, so we have all negatives, we get that error message. And then likewise, let's say that we go in and we enter all negative numbers right here. If we don't have a positive number in the range, we also get this error message right here. I misspelled range in the error message, so let me go back and fix that. Range must have at least one positive and one negative number in it, and so we have that. Now I'm going to shrink this formula bar back again because we don't really need it to be that big for anything else. What I can now do is take this whole function and then go into the name manager where we have the MOIC function defined and I can select this whole thing and then paste in our new version right here. And I'll delete the range reference because we don't want that in the named version of this. And I'll say close or I can just press enter and then close. Now once we've done that, we can go back here and test to make sure that it now works with detecting invalid input. And now it does. We get an error message. And likewise, if I just delete everything in the range, we also get an error message, whereas we would have gotten a divide by zero error with the standard sum if function. So this tells you what Lambda functions can do. And of course, if we had another series of cache flows here, if we just entered some random numbers down here, we could just apply the MOIC function to this without having to type the whole sum if and doing the error checking again. So it may not save a huge amount of time, but it can definitely add up. And if you use common functions repeatedly in an Excel file or model you're working on, Lambda functions could be quite useful. Let's go to the last part now and talk about how to extend this and some drawbacks. So this multiple of invested capital function is good, but it could be even better if we added more error checking. For example, here, it's good to check for one positive and one negative number, but we'd also want to check to make sure we're not applying this to text or dates or other things that are not true number values in Excel. That gets a bit tricky, so I'm not going to go into it here, but that would be something else that we could potentially add to it. In terms of drawbacks to Lambda functions, the first one, as I showed you before, is that they are a little cumbersome to edit when you look at the length of these functions and the way it normally shows up in the formula bar. You can certainly extend it, as I've been doing. You can use Alt-Enter to add some line breaks, but it still gets complicated, and if you get into something with 20 or 30 commands in it or something like that, it presents the same problem as having a long and complicated Excel formula. It's hard to understand what's going on. The second drawback is that although you can use Lambda functions for some very impressive things, you can find plenty of threads on Reddit where people will talk about this and present their examples. I still think it's a bit confusing. And for something like looping through cells or entire spreadsheets, I would prefer VBA and macros in most cases. And then the third drawback is that Lambda functions are not easily portable. What I mean is that if you create a function in this file, it's always going to be linked to this file. So if you open a new file or you're working on a new model, you have to go in and take everything that you created in the name manager and go into all the commands here, copy and paste them, and transfer them over to the new file like that. So it's a bit different from something like importing the quick access toolbar in Excel or importing a macro package where that just takes effect at the Excel program level. Lambda functions are linked to specific files, which makes them a bit more difficult to use and requires some setup time when you open a new file or start working on some type of new file. That's about it. So let's do a quick recap and summary. I showed you how to create the multiple of invested capital function here. Overall, using the Lambda notation, it's not too complicated, but you do have to be very careful with the syntax with defining the variables or variable like range that you want to use up front and always remembering to enter the input parameters at the end. Now, once we did that, we went through the error checking and I showed you how you can use the count if and and functions to make sure there's at least one positive and one negative number in the range and display an error message if there's not. And then we talked about the extensions and drawbacks. You could certainly add more error checking to this to make it even more robust, although it can get a little complicated and make the function even harder to read. And then with the drawbacks, there are issues around how to actually edit this in Excel because it's not the easiest thing to do, especially when it gets long and complicated. Lambda functions are not really the best solution if you are working with entire ranges of cells or over spreadsheets and you're trying to add and delete regions or entire sheets or things like that. And then finally, they're not easily portable because you have to go into the name manager and copy and paste any Lambda functions that you've created into a new file if they don't already have them. That's about it for this tutorial. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about this new feature in Excel and how you might be able to use it in financial models and financial analysis.